Professor Su Young Kes, University Standard Philosophy Course. Hi, everyone. So, today we are talking about the Crusades, but does it have anything with philosophy? Anything does not happen suddenly. People take action, only when they get reason. However, even in history classes, we learned only that Roman Catholicism rose, and the Crusades occurred. Indeed it is an easy explanation to understand, but that sort of thing is often suspicious. As mentioned in the last lesson, both of Europe and Islam at that time were fragmented and complicated. That should not be the excuse for looking away. The courage to take on things difficult to understand, that's philosophy. Even if it is a philosophy, does it have anything to see as a philosophy? People will seek out new ideas, in times of upheaval. In addition, those are connected as a series. To get the beginning, we must start in Eastern Europe, a region we skipped last time. After King Attila, the Huns disappeared in the middle of the 5th century, due to the internal conflict. Instead the Ostrogoths ruled, from the Pannonian Basin to Rome. But in the 6th century, Byzantine Emperor, Justinian I, temporarily restored the former Roman Empire, and destroyed the Ostrogoths. After that, the unknown Hungarians of the East, settled in the Pannonia, and the Slavs of the North, came to the west of the Black Sea. Whenever there's a vacant lot, someone will come right away. When the medieval warm period of the second half of the 7th century, turned Central Asia into a desert, the Turkic Bulgars moved west, and formed Bulgaria with the Slavic inhabitants. Meanwhile, the Islamic Umayyad, suffering from desertification too, invaded for food, the Turkic Hazars of the north over the Caucasus. This was around the same time that the Norman Vikings invaded Europe, right? Against the invasion of Islam, the Byzantine Empire and the Hazars cooperated. Although the Jews were admitted by Islam as its predecessor, to overthrow it, the Jews migrated to the Hazars, and the Hazars also converted to Judaism. Fearing that the Bulgarian would also convert to Judaism, the Byzantines forced the Bulgarians to convert to the Eastern Church. In 894, the Bulgarian King Simeon I invaded the Byzantine, proclaimed himself Byzantine Emperor, and in opposition to the Eastern Church and Judaism, accepted rather the Gnostic Christianity as Bogomilism. Gnostic Christianity was a heresy cult that views the Jewish Creator God as a devil who had trapped us in this world and seeks to directly recognize the true God. The Northern German Duchy of Saxony was suffering from invasions by the Norman Danes of the North, the Slavs of the Northeast, and the Hungarians of the East, but the nominal East Frank king was ineffective, so the Duke had to repel them on his own. Thus in 919, although a Saxon, Duke Henry I, became the East Frank king. As well, the Syrian Kurds, belonging to Harijit Shiites, rejecting either the Umayyads or the Shiite Imams, and believing that, an honorable person should become Caliph, regardless of race or ethnicity, established their Hamdanid dynasty, and took control of the Abbasid Caliph as Amir, or Chancellor, in 942. Now began the era where ability was over family. However, the Byzantine Emperor Constantine VII, pushed back the Bulgarian Empire, with diplomatic relations with the Norman Rus, the Saxonian East Frank, and the Iberian later Umayyad. As called Porphyrogenitos, namely, born in the Purple Imperial Palace, he was an exceptionally cultured man. Surrounded by books and scholars, he studied history and nature, collected arts and crafts, in addition, he wrote and painted. His empress was also well educated, and enjoyed that with him. Thus, they led to the Macedonian Renaissance, as patrons for scholars and artists. Culture is also an ability. His coat was a culture salon, and everyone would have wanted to socialize with the couple. Meanwhile, what happened to devastated Western Europe? The adulteress Marosia was killed in prison, and her grandson Pope John XII, failed to expand the Papal States, and had to crown the East Frank King Otto I, who helped him, Holy Roman Emperor in 962. Emperor Otto I, married his son, with a Byzantine princess, and introduced the Macedonian Renaissance to Italy. Also, although the Abbasid Caliph in Baghdad was taken away by the Iranian Twelver Shiites Buwayyad, the palace of the Hamdanid in Aleppo, became the Islamic cultural center, instead of Baghdad. Many famous figures were born there, the poet Al-Mutanabi, whose poetry was full of courage and wit, and the female astronomer al Ijiliya, as known as Maryam al-Astrul-Arbir, who invented the astrolabe for astronomical survey. 
The Iberian later Umayyad also established in the Zara Palace, namely Flower Palace, of the capital Cordoba, the world's first university, with the library of 400,000 volumes, attracting many students from Europe, as well as the Islamic world. It was now a cultural competition. Here, a female scholar was featured at last in this course. The Norman Rus and the Bulgarian Empire defeated the Hazars in 965, so the converted Jews of the Hazars fled west into Hungary, and further Slavs. The North African Ismaili Shiite Fatimid conquered Egypt in 969, founded a new capital Cairo, and expanded its influence into southern Syria, but North Africa became independent as the Sunni Zirid in 983. Adding the Jews, Hungary invaded the old rival Bulgaria, and the Byzantines at last conquered Bulgaria in 1001. Therefore, the Bulgarian Bogomils also had to flee to Western Europe. Everybody had moved again. Didn't the church hold any events in the year 1000 AD? They did not know the exact year, when Jesus was born. So they instead used for the moment, the martyrdom era, associated with Emperor Diocletian, who martyred many. It began in 284 AD, therefore for them, the year 1000 AD, was just the year 716 ME. The millennium was still a vague mystery to them. After the Edict of Milan by Emperor Constantine in 313, granted religious freedom, a Jewish community appeared in Cologne. The Frank Kingdom needed financial support to repel Muslims from Iberia, so gave them preferential treatment. In the 10th century, many Jews from Italy and France migrated to the Rhine River and took charge of long-distance trade. Mainz in particular became their cultural center with a Jewish academy, yeshiva. Was there any problem with that? The Gnostic Bogomils, who had been driven out of Bulgaria, fled there too. They were also known as Cathars, namely the Purs, and they hated not only the privileged Jews, but also the Catholic Church and political corruption. They gained new support from many downtrodden common people and peasants there. It looks like they could become a flashpoint someday. In Samarkand in northern Central Asia, the Persians fought against Turkic nomads, and established the Samanid dynasty in 892. Although they sent the defeated slaves to their suzerain Abbasid, it valued the Turkic fighting ability, so organized them into the private army, Mamluks. Despite being slaves, as the direct commanders of the Abbasid, they rather controlled the surrounding tribes, even the Samanid. This too will likely ignite a big fire soon. However, as the successor to the Sassanid dynasty, the Samanid revived Persian culture, at the court of Bukhara. Some Turkic nomads, such as the Seljuks, disliked the Mamluks, the slaves of the Abbasid attacking them, despite the same Turkics, so they dared to convert to Islam, and serve the more elegant and generous Samanid. In their proud eyes, the Mamluks were the worst raiders. A Persian of the Samanid, Eun Sina, as known as Arvi Sena, learned of Aristotle, through the books of Al-Farabi, a previous scholar from the same Central Asia. He became a physician of the royal court, but in 999, the Samanid was destroyed by the Turkic Mamluk Ghaznavid of southern Afghanistan, so he had to move, and serve the 12 Shiite Buwayyad of Iran, where he compiled the medical canon and the philosophical book of healing. Because of the loss of the Samanid, the Persian old poet Ferdowsi, was confused too. He was writing the Shahnameh, an epic of Persian kings and heroes, for 30 years. When finished it, he reluctantly presented it to the Ghaznavid, but the Turkic Mamluks found it hard to accept. The Turkics would never welcome such a Persian culture. Caliph al-Hakim of the Fatimid of Egypt, thoroughly implemented Ismaili Shiite ideology, and not only his wearing shabby clothes, but he also banned wine, music, and even bathing for the common people. He also destroyed the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. He expanded the Fatimid, and absorbed the Kurdish Hamdanid of Syria. He built a university, Dur al-Ilm, a missionary of science, in the capital Cairo, to rival Baitul Hikmah of the Abbasid in Baghdad. He was like a transplant of the vibrant Hamdanid court culture, in Aleppo to Cairo. In 1016, a Persian Aldarazi, came to Cairo from Bukhara, the former capital of the Samanid, and preached a new cult, Druzism. It was no longer Islam, but, influenced by Greek philosophy, a monotheistic Unitarianism, that worshipped a unique rational god, and believed human reincarnation. Al-Darazi claimed that, Caliph al-Hakim was an incarnation of God, and gained an explosive following, but Caliph al-Hakim hated him, and executed him in 1018. Nevertheless, the Druzes became a major power in the Levant.
a strange guy, drifted out of the collapsed Sumanet. The excessive import of Greek philosophy would have overtaken Islam. Caliph al-Hakim was assassinated in 1021, and the Fatimid declined. So the unleashed Jerusalem, welcomed many pilgrims of various religions, and prospered as an international trading city. In 1023, Amalfi merchants built a pilgrim's hostel, on the ruins of the monastery of St. John the Baptist, and entrusted it to the Order of St. John, as known as Hospitallers. Also in the west, the Iberian later Umayyad collapsed by the local clans in 1031. A remnant of the Christian Visigoths in the north, and the Franks in the east, invaded the Islamic Iberia together, as the Reconquista. The Germanic peoples reclaimed Iberia, which Islam had ruled for 300 years. The Turkic Seljuks, who had served previously the Samanid, detested the ruling of the Mamluk Ghaznavid of Afghanistan, and established their own independent state, at Nishapur of the North Persa, in 1035. Conspiring with the Abbasid Caliph under arrest, the chieftain of the Seljuks, received the title of Sultan, namely ruler, and drove the Buwayat out of Baghdad in 1055. The Seljuk Empire built Nizamiya schools, in various major cities, teaching moderate jurisprudence and theology, that emphasized textual criticism and rational consideration, over local customs and personal revelation. Even though the Turkics, they were the very legitimate heirs of Sassanid and Samanid Persian culture. The numerous Cluny abbeys generated enormous wealth, and it made the positions of the Pope and bishops, the focus of a power struggle. In particular, Benedict IX, who became Pope in 1032, was the epitome of church corruption with homosexuality and simony. He sold even the papacy, so the three popes stood simultaneously. The Holy Roman Emperor Henry III, expelled all of them in 1048, but the new pope was assassinated after only 23 days. In the first place, has the Roman Catholic Church ever been clean? The Reconquista in Iberia robbed and drove out, also the wealthy Sephardim Jews protected under Islam. They crossed the Pyrenees into southern France, and shocked common people there. Disappointed by the corrupt and incompetent Roman Catholic Church, the people called in the anti-Semitic and anti-church Cathars, from the Rhine. They believed that, their souls were imprisoned in the earthy polluted bodies, and practiced asceticism, to escape from reincarnation. They had no priests, but the perfectes with the ability to purify people, lived like true monks and nuns, with extreme asceticism. Seeing how rich Jews have fallen into poverty and been chased away, it is no wonder that people believe that greed ruins humans. Supported by Holy Roman Emperor Conrad II, German Pope Leo IX, worked hard to purify the church. Meanwhile the Normans had already occupied northern France, and claimed the title Duke of Normandy, moreover they had circumnavigated the Iberian Peninsula, entered the Mediterranean, and occupied also North Africa in 1048. Pope Leo IX, fought against the Normans invading southern Italy, but died in 1053. With the Normans, the problem became even more complicated. After that, several clergymen vied for the papacy, while the Normans gained southern Italy. Nicholas II allied rather with the Normans, and defeated the anti-pope by force in 1059, furthermore, he had the Normans, recapture Scilly from Muslims. The Duke of Normandy also robbed the English throne in 1066. With Rhine Jews, the Holy Roman Emperor Henry IV, exploited the Saxons, and intervened in the church, by appointing another pope. When the Saxon lords revolted against him, Pope Gregory VII associating with the Normans, also excommunicated and dethroned him. So Henry IV had to travel to Canossa, to apologize to Pope Gregory VII, in 1077. Pope, Emperor, the Normans and the Jews, these were troublesome old stars. A northeastern Persian genius in mathematics and astronomy, Omar Khayyam, was invited to the Seljuk Empire, and created the Jalerli calendar, more accurate than the European one. He was also a talented poet, he wrote many rabayat, namely quatrains, praising wine and beautiful women, but with the mode of impermanence, although he did not publish them, to avoid religious condemnation. Al-Ghazarli is known as al ghazlis a Persian from the same region as Khayyam, studying at the local Nizamiya, was appointed a professor of the Nizamiya of the capital Baghdad. Although he based on orthodox jurisprudence and theology, with a sense of crisis, against the hollow authority of the ulama, namely intellectuals, and the blind dependence on the imams, he also learned Sufism, and explored the immaterial metaphysics of God. The Seljuk Empire was adept at recruiting talents. In England, Anselm of Canterbury, also attempted the metaphysics of God as realism, insisting that, God is the greatest being, 
and what greater than human thinking, exists really. On the contrary, Rosellinus, a monk in the northeast of Paris, argued that, God is just a name of word, because if God were a substance, then both the Creator and the Holy Spirit must have incarnated with Jesus. Suspected as a tritheist, Rosellinus fled to England in 1092, and discussed the problem of universals against Anselm, but he was defeated and expelled. So, Rosellinus went to Rome, to preach the non-existence and independence of names, thus clearing up any misunderstandings. Demanded large money to appoint Archbishop of Canterbury, by the Norman King of England, Anselm had to flee to Rome too. Different from Islam, Europe had no condition for free research. West Europe was in constant conflict. Improvements in agriculture led to an increase in population, but for them, adding the Normans, the land was shorted. At that time, the Seljuk Empire occupied Asia Minor, and in 1095, the Byzantine Emperor asked Pope Urban II, for mercenaries. Urban II twisted the story, and called on the Council of Clermont, to retake Jerusalem from the Muslims. Namely it was in fact, a policy of people abandonment. Peter the Hermit of Amiens, incited the people, and, first to gain the campaign funds, had them attack and rob the Ranjus, who were supporting the Holy Roman Emperor Henry IV, financially. After that, 40,000 people started to the east, and plundered Jewish villages in Hungary, descendants of the Hazars. Although they got to Byzantium, the Byzantine Emperor, troubled by the hordes of robbers without military power, pushed out them at once to Asia Minor, where they dispersed and disappeared. It may have been a plot to crush both the characters and the wine Jews, who are taught with the Roman Catholic Church. Of course, regular troops were also prepared. A bishop, who was a former soldier, played a central role, the Count of Toulouse, who had fought Muslims in Iberia, and the Duke of Taranto, who had occupied southern Italy as Normans, led the Germanic and the Norman knights. Adding clergy and lay pilgrims, the Crusaders swelled to 100,000 people. The church renewal movement also gained momentum, and the Cistercian order with white robes in Burgundy, became independent from the corrupt Cluny order with black robes, in 1098. War is happy, only before it begins. However surprisingly, the Crusaders could even have founded their own new countries, easily along the way in Syria, because the Seljuk suffering inner conflicts, left them vacant. When the Crusaders got to Jerusalem in 1099, they massacred not only Muslims but also the Jews and the Eastern Christians, and their kingdom of Jerusalem monopolized trade with Genoa and Venice, gaining enormous wealth. After all, they were a gang of robbers too. They had to protect the Holy Land, the pilgrims, and above all, their huge interests in Levant business, so even the local order of St. John began to arm themselves, as the Knights of Hospitaller. Also on the European side, supported by Bernard of the Cistercian, a military order, the Knights Templar, was established. Given the privileges of tax and service exemptions, it received huge donations from various lords, and with the direct military power, the Pope forced the Emperor, to approve that, Emperor had no right to appoint any clergyman, as the Worms Concordat in 1122. The church's own army would be more effective than mercenaries or the Normans. However, the local Turk exenged, destroyed the Syrian county of Edessa, in 1144. Bernard of the Cistercian recruited the Second Crusaders, and even the big names, such as the King of France and the Holy Roman Emperor, joined. Escorted by the Knights of Templar, they reached Jerusalem, but they had not a fighting spirit, and disbanded there. It was just a sightseeing trip, of kings. Abelard, who got a female student pregnant, and was forced to become a monk, developed the nominalism of Rosellinus, to conceptualism, that, universals do not exist in reality, but are held as human concepts. However, this idea threatened the reality of the Roman Catholic, namely Universal Church, so Bernard of the Cistercian thoroughly refuted him, and had him excommunicated in 1141. Regardless of his thoughts, I have heard his love romance with a female student. In 1121, the Berbers of Morocco, established the Almohad dynasty, and recaptured Iberia from the Christians. Ion Rushd, as known as Ever Rose of Cordova, was invited to the court as a physician, and engaged in the planning of a new university, as a well-read commentator on Aristotle. He recriticized Al-Ghazali, who had criticized Al-Farabi. Al-Farabi of Central Asia introduced Aristotle to Islam of the Abbasid age, around 900, so he was called the second master after Aristotle. Persian Eon Sinar as known as Arvicena in the Buwayyad dynasty around 1000, learned Aristotle from Al-Farabi, and insisted on the need for logical inference. 
However the same Persian Al-Ghazarli, a professor of Nizamiya of Baghdad of the Seljuk dynasty around 1100, felt the limit of reason, and became interested in Sufism. But against him, Ion Rushd now eliminated the Neoplatonic emanation theory, that had previously crept into Aristotle, and clarified Aristotle's original rationalism. However, to fight against the Christians in Iberia, the Almohad dynasty had to cooperate with other Islamic nations, so exiled the two modern Ion Rushd, and burned his books in 1195. Gradually the limits of religious states were becoming apparent. In 1163, the Kingdom of Jerusalem invaded the weakened Fatimid of Egypt. In response to a call for help, the Zenjid of Syria sent Kurdish general, Saladin. He unified both Zenjid and Fatimid armies, but the Zenjid considered that his rebellion, so Saladin in turn conquered the Zenjid in 1183, and established his own Ayyubid dynasty. In 1187, he attacked the Kingdom of Jerusalem, defeating the Templars and the Hospitallers, and recaptured the area. The Jerusalem army barely held the port of Acre, and the Third Crusade quickly arrived, so in 1192, peace was reached, by allowing them to keep Acre, and pilgrims to visit Jerusalem. Since the Roman era, imports of Egyptian wheat have been a lifeline for Italy. Therefore, the Pope planned a direct expedition to Egypt, with 30,000 troops. However, what gathered in Venice in 1201 was, only 10,000, what's more, they didn't have enough money for the ship fare. In exchange for the payment, Venice had them destroy a rival port Zara, on the opposite shore. At that time, requested for help by the Byzantine prince, whose brother had usurped the throne, they attacked Constantinople, committed as much plunder and massacre as they could, and established their own Latin Empire there, staying without going to either Egypt or Jerusalem. Enthusiasm fades easily, and rioters are worse than mercenaries.